good afternoon good afternoon ladies and gentlemen welcome to the weekly webinar organized by sri lanka medical association today we are going to focus on where the risk of transmission is highest let me introduce myself first i am dr pramita mahanama who is going to moderate today's webinar along with professor indika karuna tilaka the president of sri lanka medical association and also dr b kumarendran to begin the webinar i would like to invite professor indika karuna tilaka the president of sri lanka medical association over to you sir thank you pramita so again very warm welcome to all of you for this very important webinar on big break in the risk of the transmission chain and uh, today we will be focusing on where the risk is highest and how to prevent and break the chain of transmission by focusing on those areas this is very important because now it is the second week after restarting gradually restarting the economic activities and uh, today's session will be moderated by myself and dr pramita mahanama and uh, dr b kumarendran all of our uh, slme members and council members and uh, we have a very eminent panel of resource person today with us uh, that represent in a range of disciplines including uh, law enforcement hospitality apparel industry transport and innovations and uh, so basically uh, all the resource persons that may be needed or required to discuss the current situation during the second week and also to find out what are the means ways and means of possible issues that need to be addressed and how this they can be addressed so i warmly welcome all of you all the resource persons as well as the participants and i would start with the uh, dig ajit rohana because he would be the best person to tell us the current situation during last two weeks so what were the areas that were satisfactory about the people's behavior and what are the areas that needs improvement over to you did dig ajit rohana Uh, thank you very much uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for giving this opportunity to uh, me to address you all and especially uh, as you all know uh, uh, in kalambu and gampaha districts uh, uh, we have forced the quarantine curfew and the curfew is being enforced at the moment and however the day to day works are uh, running on Uh, in addition to that uh, other areas all other 23 districts in the country uh, during the day time uh, we lift the curfew and again in the night uh, curfew is imposed for a, a period of uh, 10 hours so this is the for for a for a period of 9 hours so this is the situation in the country and uh, as you all know on the 11th of uh, may uh, we started uh, day to day works uh, in the kalambu city and in kalambu district and gampaha district uh, and especially uh, i could say that uh, the 99% of the the citizens uh, or the inmates of the area they adhere and obey with the quarantine rules and regulation as you all know uh, now we have uh, approximately uh, over uh, thousand covid positive patients but all these covid positive patients uh, have been generated from 31 clusters so still uh, 30 clusters uh, have been deactivated but still uh, one cluster is being activated at the moment so therefore still the the covid positive patients are generated uh, but from clusters so however Uh, our main ambition and main objective is to uh, i mean to not to expect uh, patients from uh, the community so i think uh, uh, we were able to uh, compromise the situation at the moment but uh, uh, last yesterday an incident happened in maligawat area as you all know uh, we uh, we implemented quarantine curfew in the kalambu city and in kalambu district and uh, we uh, stress a uh, general public or inmates of the area to not to uh, go against the quarantine curfew so they had to um, 
follow the the ID card number system. So yesterday was a Thursday. So therefore, uh, the inmates of the area, if they don't go for their works uh, or uh, their working institutions, uh, they were compelled to stay at home. Uh, generally, uh, if they need to go out to the nearest customer center, so they have to walk to the customer center. And apart from that, uh, they had to adhere with uh, this particular ID card number system. But uh, we observed that uh, approximately thousands of uh, uh, persons, they gathered there and finally three deaths uh, had been reported. So this is the, the pathetic situation in the country. Constantly, we have been giving uh, advices, instructions to the general public. 99% of uh, the, the general public, so they adhere uh, with uh, the police uh, advices and uh, the health advices, but 1%, so they don't adhere. So the, uh, that was the pathetic uh, situation uh, in the country. Uh, so we need to take a stern action against the, the persons, the lawbreakers, and the six persons have been arrested at the moment, and they have been produced. Uh, they are being produced before the court. And uh, uh, in addition to that, they would be uh, charged under the several offences of penal code. So one of the offences uh, is uh, 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 neglectful uh, murder committed. Uh, with neglectful act. So uh, this is the situation in the country. So therefore, uh, I mean, being a law enforcement officer, what I can say is, uh, apart from the other areas, uh, such as uh, uh, the other 23 districts, uh, the Colombo and Gampaha uh, district, the situation is slightly a change because the people they don't adhere with uh, instructions uh, health advices given by police so therefore um, so every time they should be vigilant on police advices or the health advices and uh, our main uh, objective should be not to create another cluster uh, I think all of us will agree that the law enforcement and the police and the Thai forces have been doing a fantastic job here in implementing the law and order, making sure that people comply with the health regulations. Uh, now, on the first day, what we have observed was many people and most of the institutions, they were complying with the regulations and uh, all the security uh, health precautions were taken. As time goes on, what do you expect? I mean, uh, what do you think, DIG, you throw on that? As time goes on, could there be a complacency setting in and people slowly forgetting that there was a threat like that? Is that possible? Now we are into the second week and then uh, we will move into the next week as well. So yeah. is there that kind of possibility? And if so, uh, what kind of monitoring mechanism uh, in place that is with the, with the law enforcement? Yes, uh, actually, uh, we, we, we monitor the situation uh, in, I mean, different two ways. Number one, so we deploy uh, police officers in uniform uh, to the areas where these public gatherings are generally public gatherings happen, especially supermarkets, uh, the trade centers, uh, and uh, all these uh, uh, areas. And apart from that, we have another strategy. Uh, we deploy police officers in plain clothes, so especially our intelligence officers, in order to um, collect uh, information uh, on uh, curfew violators. And in addition to that, as you all know, the Colombo city has been covered by a CCTV camera system. Uh, I mean, the owned by police, uh, operated by police. Generally, uh, we have 100, uh, uh, approximately 105 cameras. Uh, uh, those cameras uh, cover whole Colombo city, uh, uh, all uh, uh, public places, important places. So therefore, then and there, uh, we can get uh, those informations uh, to our control room and accordingly, uh, we can act. Uh, every time, 10 to 15 police officers, they monitor 
the situation, public gatherings, processions, uh, or uh, the other activities in the Colombo city by using this uh, CCTV camera system uh, the, from our control room, and they pass that message to the police officers who are on ground, uh, then uh, we can uh, act accordingly. And in addition to that, other areas, especially, uh, we are conducting patrols along with, uh, along with uh, health authorities, uh, such as uh, public health inspectors, so uh, the government medical officers. Uh, and we have visited several places, workplaces, institutions, banks, uh, uh, factories. Uh, but uh, we are happy to say that 99% uh, uh, of them, they adhere with health rules and regulations. They respect the, uh, the concept of uh, social distancing. And uh, there are places uh, to wash the hands of the employees. So all the, 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 uh, the required... Uh, uh, facilities had been provided. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, now, uh, I mean, when are we going to lift this curfew? So everyone is asking this question, but it depends on the public behavior and the conduct. Uh, we cannot predict that because uh, the, the police, uh, uh, we are also, uh, we are enforcing law and the health uh, sector, the health employees, the doctors, everyone. So they are monitoring the situation, but uh, still uh, from clusters, uh, the, the COVID uh, positive patients are generated. So therefore we cannot predict uh, that, uh, the, I mean, the, the whole uh, situation uh, before the, the 11th of March. So it takes time. Yeah. Um, so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ajit Rohana, now uh, you said that 1% uh, of our people do not adhere to these uh, health regulations. Yes. And uh, it's very difficult to eliminate the risk completely, I think. So yeah. um, once this curfew is being fully lifted, and uh, if and when the schools, airports, uh, and the, such places uh, are open again, uh, where would you think... Uh, that we should focus more on tightening these rules and regulations, especially as a law enforcement officer. Yes, uh, now it doesn't, irrespective of the curfew or non curfew period. Now, uh, as you all know, there are 23 districts, curfew is not implemented, but every time uh, you have to adhere with this health habit number one, social distancing. Social distancing is the main, uh, uh, main issue we are having. Uh, so therefore, uh, during the curfew period, or there is no curfew at all, but you have to adhere with uh, that uh, rules and regulation. Uh, as I mentioned, so sometimes uh, after two weeks or three weeks time, because uh, the threat, uh, not only to the, the threat in respect of COVID-19, it is not uh, only affected to Sri Lanka, but the world situation is the same. So still the patients uh, are uh, being generated from clusters from the community, other countries, and uh, uh, our uh, uh, citizens who were living in uh, foreign countries, so they are coming and straight away they are sent to quarantine centers. From that center, so also the patients are being generated. So therefore, we cannot give any predictions. However, uh, however, every time general public, uh, they should adhere with. Uh, the, the basic concept of uh, social distancing. And apart from that, so if you don't have anything, if you are not going for work, uh, or if you are not a self-employee, stay at home all the times and respect the, uh, the rules and regulation. And in addition to that, what I need to emphasize is uh, uh, generally, uh, initially we had five clusters, but many clusters were generated because uh, the COVID positive patients or the, or the patients uh, who are having symptoms, they were reluctant to divulge their identity. So that was the problem we were having earlier. So therefore, uh, we need to make a request from, I mean, everyone, every citizen in the country or the foreigner. Uh, so if you are having symptoms or suspected symptom, symptoms in respect of uh, COVID-19, so immediately contact the nearest uh, health uh, officials or the police, then we can provide all the facilities. So again, uh, 
what we have heard was a tremendous well organized operation that is launched uh, a well coordinated operation between the law enforcement here and the government authorities so that is one part the law enforcement and now we have a another very important person with us uh, that's professor rangika halwathura professor rangika any ideas about how the inventors invention side can help the government or maybe law enforcement related to the controlling situation I mean, the, well, the situation that was described by the IT as it flows. It's a challenging question, I know. <laughs> yeah, Professor Indiga, uh, thank you for organizing this particular great event. I mean, it's, it's always uh, nice to uh, have this sort of a panel uh, to, you know, share the experience. Anyway, if I go back to your question, well, even what uh, Mr. Ajit says is an innovation, right? So he, uh, it's, it is not the normal way of uh, enforcing the, the law and order in the country. So they got together, especially about the health sector, the, uh, the military and the police and even the, the political uh, uh, authorities and, and also the other government agencies and the private agencies. So they all got together and uh, managed to set up uh, the law and order in the country and managed to, you know, anyhow, they managed to control as studies clearly stated, there were uh, 31 clusters and now only one cluster is remaining. That is again, uh, very, uh, it's due to a very sad, unfortunate situation made by the, the community. So anyway, uh, if we uh, go back to the correction, I mean, I think within this particular uh, COVID uh, pandemic uh, lockdown situation, there were a lot of inventions happens. Uh, it's not really the, uh, the gadgetmatics or the, the equipment they made. More than all, the social innovation, I, I always uh, don't like to uh, use this social uh, distance because I mean, we, we were never socially distanced. I mean, more than uh, more than ever, we, we managed to close each, each other. Socially, we were very close. Socially, I mean, uh, it, 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 we bond uh, together more, more than ever, I, I could say. So that particular, uh, the humanity was lost uh, in the past, but uh, due to the COVID pandemic, we managed to create that particular social links again. It's not the social uh, distance, it's the physical distance, right? I mean, not the, socially we got together, but uh, physically we, we create distance uh, about one meter or whatever. So it's not really social distance. And even that particular word, that particular concept is itself a innovation, in a, a social, social innovation. So I feel like uh, not, uh, I mean, we, we should give the full credit by, while giving all the due respect and the credit to the military and the health sector. As uh, Mr. Ajit clearly stated, 99% of the community, they were, they were, they were with their social, uh, uh, I mean, uh, they have a responsibility. So they knew the social responsibility and they were with the, uh, the social responsibility. They respected the social responsibility. And because of that, we managed to control everything. So it is not because of, uh, uh, only not because of the, uh, the, the law and order implemented by all these governing authorities, but also the, uh, the support given by the, the social people. So all and each and every step uh, they put forward, I could say it's an innovation and an innovative idea. So more than the uh, the items they made, I think we should respect the the people who came up with new ideas to stay at home, even to uh, be with the family members, uh, how to interact with the, the community, how to uh, how to you know uh, make sure they get the, the required resources uh, to their home. So all these things, I think uh, it's innovation. And uh, finally, because of that particular innovation, they are surviving today. If, it is, if the whole country was at a lockdown for two months, I, 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 I'm very sure the, the country will be at a real deadlock, but that was not happened because of all these social innovations happening in the country. Yeah, I think uh, that's really, I mean, very valuable words coming from you, from, a, from an engineer and someone who's very technical, because the whole idea here is uh, we are focusing on the community empowerment. Uh, whatever enforcement we bring in, whatever rules we bring in, without the community enforcement and the engagement, everything would be lost. I think so. A lot of credit should go to our people, the citizens of Sri Lanka, yeah. as uh, you and DIG Ajit Rohan very correctly mentioned. Without the support of the people, Sri Lanka wouldn't have control because. At the moment, we are actually, apart from one cluster, Sri Lanka is actually in a very good situation. The countries control the disease to a very commendable degree. So I think a lot of credit should go to the, go to the community. This is the whole idea of this 
webinars also. How can we empower the community? And, and conceptually, how can we engage them? How can we empower? So I really appreciate those words coming from you because it's not all about, say, high-powered inventions. Initially, there are a lot of interest about making ventilators, but ultimately it's not about making ventilators, but, but empowering people how to, how to break this cycle of transmission. Kumarendran, would you like to say a few words as a community physician? Um, right, okay. Uh, and uh, with regards to the inventions, uh, a couple of things we can comment because uh, uh, traditionally in Sri Lanka, the most of the people have been using the, you know, the hand operated taps. And, uh, you know, now widely we can see that many people use the pedal operated taps. And uh, there are so much of, uh, so many benefits due to these pedal operated taps. One thing, because we can reduce the uh, contamination of the hands. In the meantime, we can also reduce the wastage of water. But that will also, because with the COVID pandemic, we can see the, there's a, a lot of consumption of water for the increased uh, hand washing practices. So that, uh, that invention, uh, we have to really appreciate. Uh, thank you. So what you, what you are telling is the simple things matter, isn't it? Rather yeah, than yeah. sophisticated things, simple things in, in breaking the transmission cycle for us to focus on where the transmission can happen and where this transmission from maybe an infected person into the, into the environment and into the surfaces or directly and then that getting into another person. How can we break this? Yeah. And... Uh, that's why today we are focusing on the high risk situations and uh, transport also could be considered as a high risk situation. Dr. Pramita, can you introduce uh, Professor Amal Kumaragi and uh, say why the transport system is so important and as a high risk situation, why we need to take measures? Pramita? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we have uh, Professor Amal Kumaragi the Senior Professor, Department of uh, Transport and Logistics Management uh, from University of Moratur. So, uh, over to you, Professor Amal Kumar. Thank you, Dr. Pramita. Yes, I think um, we need to keep talking about uh, how to handle this situation. Uh, obviously, we have been one of the con better uh, countries that have better handled the situation. Uh, but uh, I think uh, we need to continue to uh, look at the challenges and, um, uh, and do what is right. I don't think we can um, uh, keep talking about uh, the things that we have done right and forget uh, what we have to do right in the future. Unfortunately, sometimes uh, we tend to do that and probably this is not a good time to think too much about the past but to look at uh, the present and the future. So having said that, I think um, to uh, look at transportation, I mentioned at the last webinar also that, uh, <clears throat> that I see this as one of the, the most vulnerable links because uh, we, have, uh, we have learned how to be, stay safe at home. We have all the measures in place. Uh, the workplaces, the factories, the offices uh, are uh, getting they're getting ready, they have uh, guidelines in place, they have processors in place, and uh, the connections between the two, which is uh, the transport, uh, remains vulnerable. Uh, why do I say it remains vulnerable? Because uh, clearly, even though uh, curfew is being relaxed and uh, more and more people are feeling free to go, I think uh, the question needs to be asked, uh, are all the checks and balances in place? Um, and with this, I, I also want to pick up something that uh, Professor Indika keeps repeating, and that is uh, the, the move from uh, uh, the, the enforced environment uh, with curfew and putting people, uh, charging people, and uh, you know, managing it uh, in that way. Moving to a self-regulatory environment which is uh, where people know uh, the limits and people, uh, people uh, you know, safeguard themselves. So in transport, uh, this is something that uh, is, uh, is very challenging uh, because uh, uh, if the government does not provide the necessary guidelines for public 
you know movement in in and transport then people are going to do what they been doing at home which is private Uh, and officers have to do what they have to do in terms of corporate sector so this is a challenging role for the government to set out the necessary guidelines on the basis of how public transport operates now uh, many countries have actually done wonderfully well in reviving the transport they have set out guidelines they have got the different uh, regulators the operators to uh, uh train their staff they have equipped the vehicles they have provided uh, you know the machinery uh before they are allowing people back on the system uh, now i think it's important because uh, such a system uh even though it it may be safe it must appear to be safe for the users also uh so people must have the confidence that the system that they are going to use is safe so in maintaining this balance i think we need to come up with innovative ideas many countries have come up with innovative ideas how to bring about this safe return of transport uh, some people have actually promoted things like cycling uh, even cleared certain path roads uh, some have uh, cleared areas for walking some have introduced uh, technology to ensure that uh, vehicles don't get crowded you can book your seat and so on so these are all measures that can be done almost overnight because we have uh, uh, the the technology we have the means to enforce them so these are things that from government side also uh, needs to happen continue to happen to make uh, this vulnerable link a safer and uh, we still haven't seen that kind of intervention see buses on the road the only discussion has been how many seats should be filled and even there there is confusion uh, where uh, um uh, people where professionals have come and said you can take um, you know as long as there are no standees on the bus uh, it is safe so i mean there is also confusion on the health message that is going out uh, as to what is safe so when there is an environment like like that leave alone the public who need to have confidence in the system even the operators are not very sure what to do so i think this is one of the areas that need urgent attention urgent guidelines to be set urgent self regulatory systems of those who are providing the transport to ensure it is safe it's not something that the police or the armed forces can can you know effectively ensure all over the country uh, and so so i i want to make that submission for discussion uh, yes professor kumar ge now uh, uh, you were telling about the guidelines so as an expert how would you think uh, these guidelines should be made i mean uh, which sectors of uh, transport uh, that can be improved easily in sri lanka because uh, we can't use uh, most of these traditional transport systems uh, in order to keep the social distancing yes um i mean if you look at what is happening in other countries uh, it, it, i mean people who have access to private transport are using them they are not going to public transport modes then people who can afford uh, like hired vehicles are using that but even in those countries a large part uh, are dependent on public transport because it's not only just a matter of where you have a vehicle but can you go and park it and you know things like that so as cities are coming back i mean initially there is space and you know all of that but as we open up these are things that will rapidly become issues so for example uh, in in uh, in singapore for example or in hong kong uh, in taiwan and so on a large percentage 67% use public transport and in taiwan is less but uh, so these are large amounts ours is between 40 to 50% so there is no way that you can ask such people to buy cars or more mopeds and come and that causes a huge economic burden it causes congestion so unless these assurances are given that public transport can be made safe 
then we are creating number of other issues down the line. So, so this is why I'm saying that um, uh, these modes of transport can be made safe depending on how you approach it, how you open it. Uh, guidelines, uh, actually our association did a review of all the guidelines that are available post COVID uh, for buses and trains and so on. And we have put that together. We have circulated that. Uh, in that, there are differently about three phases. One is putting the guidelines on paper. Secondly, getting the authorities to implement the guidelines. And thirdly, a mechanism for enforcing the guidelines. And that's what's uh, happening all over the world. So I think we need to go there uh, because that's where the people will get the confidence that they can move around. People have done their part. The police have done their part. Uh, but I think there is that part in public transport where between government and the providers of it, uh, something more needs to be done. Thank you, uh, Professor Kumaragi and uh, Professor Indik Karnathilek, who is going to yes, be our yes, next uh, speaker. Uh, yeah. One question that I want to ask from again, Professor Kumaragi. Now, you said that's a challenging situation. On the other hand, now we can clearly understand this, the old system of unregulated, congested, transport system is clearly unfit for the for the new norm that we are talking about can we think this as a take this as a golden opportunity to bring up regulations and come up with the decent public transport system at least for the future again a challenging um, question <laughs> um, well um, it's challenging to sri lanka because we have the habit of dropping all the golden chances we get uh, so this might yet be another one of those missed uh, opportunities. Um, you're absolutely right. And as I said, um, particularly in Europe, uh, you can see many cities are now bringing in measures that they have been wanting to do for many, many decades. And this has created an opportunity to create safer, cleaner, uh, more affordable, uh, socially equitable um, urban structures. So we know that Colombo, for example, uh, has uh, too much traffic. That means we are overburdened. So, I mean, how can we make use of this to now that the streets are cleared, at least temporarily, how can we make it safer for people to cycle? I mean, it's dangerous to cycle on the road. Uh, now is an opportunity where we can start thinking of. Uh, and uh, how can we bring in transport I mean, our transport is regulated and crowded, not that it's not regulated. So how can we bring in measures uh, where a passenger will know uh, whether a bus is crowded or not? Now we have a motivation for the passenger not to get into the crowded bus. So, so can, how can we build that in to make it a self-regulated? So we have systems in place, the technology available, where even the crowding level of a bus by, you know, can be given to the passenger. So I think we are backwards in some sectors where technology has entered and transport is certainly one of them. So I think countries like India are now using this opportunity to catch up those uh, things. Uh, and, and this is where I'm pushing, you know, I think this is the kind of innovation that needs to come. Uh, uh, to bring in technology to fill these gaps that are created that can be filled fairly quickly. Exactly. I think I uh, fully, fully agree with you. I mean, this could be a kind of window of opportunity. Uh, DIG Ajit Rohan, I think uh, you also maybe agree in that a uh, few months ago, we were discussing how to reduce the road traffic crashes and the accidents. So these days, the traffic has lessened. So is it possible for you to, for us to think together and take this as a golden opportunity? Yes. Hello. Yes. Uh... I listened to the the presentation made by Dr. Kumar again, and we uh, I agree with the, the contents of the presentation because uh, if we are able to implement such systems in our country, so it would be benefited to everyone. And apart from that, we can curtail accidents uh, and traffic congestion also. Professor Rangika, any ideas from the inventions point of view? How can you make use of this window of opportunity? 
I like any, any uh, new ideas. Give, yeah, I like to give some fictions and answers. I mean, always what we did was uh, for the recent past and, and starting from 1990s. So uh, uh, we we try to give some solutions where the people were not really expecting. So even from the transport to other sectors, we we were continuously feeding problem uh, the directions. Of, uh, the, the bus came and then the train came and something and something and something. Now you take Sri Lanka, you you got the buses and the trains, and now we are going to get think of a metro line and a LRT. So we are just you know pumping answers. We are without knowing the real question. So we don't let the people to feel about the question. We are just pumping and overloading with the with the answers. As uh, Professor Kumar Gam sir was very clearly uh, uh, giving the facts. I mean I think we should. Uh, 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 there are two parties actually the 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 policy makers and the, the 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 people who really use the policies the community and the policy makers i think for both parties we should be able to feed some fictions now are we doing right for the past decades we have we were not really doing right that's why we are we are facing these fictions today from uh, uh, i mean we we talked about the the uh, the covid pandemic today but beyond everything we have a, a huge uh, climate change uh, uh coming behind us so that will be the next uh, uh critical factor so are we really doing right so this question has to be raised find answers without we feeding them uh, answers now like as uh, professor kumar ge said okay why not we think of uh, taking all the, the buses out public transport out and uh, for, uh, think of cycling are we are we are we really dear to that or is it the real question of the public so like that we should let them to think and let them to find answers so without be feeding answers i mean throughout the history what we did was we we were we were giving the answers because even in the inventions also we did the same without knowing the the real question we started finding answers and we forcefully find to endorse those answers to the community and it was a failure so finally the the final 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 uh, uh, the uh, the hit was uh, the hit from the the nature the real uh, natural science was this covid so if you can't understand that particular phenomenon even at least now we will be heading uh, for a real disaster as humans so we are not the the only uh, creature in the world that again here understand so we should we should not be overloaded with the the technology technology should be a tool so that need to be clearly identified and addressed for the issues raised by the public raised by the world so if you just concentrate on the human and try to find solutions this is what is going to happen this is what has happened this is because of the technology and the so called innovation which happened without friction so we found answers we just feed them the other answers and people start accepting without the knowing the friction and we are in a disaster so let the the people to find the answers while we feeding them the friction i mean that is what i always believe as an inventor and a, a, a person who is heading the invention commission Yeah, well, uh, a brilliant, brilliant kind of response because Corona has taught us a lesson. The lesson is how to live in harmony with the environment and how to help each other, and the importance of community empowerment because it is all about community empowerment and engagement. Pramita, yes. Uh, well, uh, when we look at uh, the world history, uh, Professor Halwatura, now uh, all these uh, great innovations are being uh, produced in these crisis situations. so uh, we see a lot of uh, innovations are coming up these days so uh, how would you encourage our people or the innovators to create these things without uh, lacking its quality i think the quality is important yeah pramita i think uh, more than we say inventions we should uh, we should talk about innovation those are not inventions i mean innovation has uh, passed the limit and they have reached the innovation because it's it's very difficult to convert invention to innovation there there should be very serious uh, serious attention and a uh, lot of people should be uh, get together and uh, then only we will be able to convert invention to innovation so whenever a, a crisis happens always more than the inventions we we manage to convert many of the inventions to innovation the reason is uh, pramita uh, we have the problem now i was i was talking about the same question over and over throughout uh, whenever we don't have a crisis we just you know dream for a question and try, try to find the answers and once you once you get the invention or the innovation we try to forcefully endorse that to the public so it was a failure but when you have a crisis always you have a question so we have the question we will find the answer then there's a community who wants to accept that particular answer uh, with a reason so that's why the inventions have uh, 
uh, basically uh, boomed up this particular situation and uh, uh, it, it's natural because i mean uh, uh, and always when uh, when you have uh, uh, when you uh, like you know when you are in a in a in a real crisis when you are in a real crisis and and beyond that the, the crisis uh, pramita uh, we were at a lockdown and we were in a very clear uh, mindset we had a lot of free time for us to sit or, or stay at a point and uh, think of what was happened and uh, always uh, the fiction was always working on our mind so it's it's very easy for us to uh, come up with an invention more than uh, the uh, more than getting that particular innovative idea the the, the real success all this particular social harmony it's not the distance are that's i mean these inventions were converted to innovation because of this social harmony because we completely uh, dissociated with social distancing we, we were worked as a team the doctors came uh, came engineers came and the inventors came so we were we were we were working as a team so that's why these inventions were easily converted to innovation and that was accepted by the community that was the success of this innovation innovative story in a crisis so in a crisis we always try to get together so we were we were successful so it's ultimate's all about it's community about empowerment isn't it exactly Ultimate. exactly yeah yeah so and yeah. more than the community uh, uh indika i think we uh, this time uh, the world got a real lesson i mean we yes. we thought the world is running world is moving but that was not the case world has stopped we were running thinking we are the we are the heroes we are the leaders of the uh, uh, the uh, the world but unfortunately or fortunately now they have given the last message maybe the last and the last final message if you don't accept this particular message that will be a real disaster so we had to understand okay we are part of the uh, big community the 7.8 billion is not a it's a small community in the whole world so there are billions and trillions of uh, the creatures living in the world so we had to respect them as well so the innovation should come in that way so it, it should be natural it should be it is not really artificial innovation the, the whole history we created artificial innovations and finally that disrupted the world now we have to think of the the natural innovation uh, the history came up to or the, or the the socialized or civilization happens with natural innovation not with artificial innovations but this recent past it was all about artificial innovation not about the natural inno- innovation so it's it, it's a disaster yeah so this this has become kind of you, you adapt and if you want to survive you adapt and you make use of this situation and, and learn the lesson yeah. exactly so kumarendran uh, as a public health person you can introduce another risky area about say the where the people can gather the apparel industry and the factories and those areas uh, yeah uh, would you move into that area and then uh, get the resource person into discussion yeah. okay uh, thank you prof indika um, so that uh, i am <laughs> privileged to introduce mr ranil vitarana the chief innovation officer at the mass holdings and also mr yusuf salim uh, ceo of process excellence in the mass holdings uh, over to you both of you thank you thank you i think uh, yusuf maybe you should go first uh, around uh, the factories and uh, Right. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, at MAS, I think I briefly updated you uh, in terms of how we approached uh, engaging our employees, how we approached uh, developing a set of protocols, how we then educated employees, uh, and uh, you know, in order to make sure that they are aware. So, I think. Uh, Dr. So Rangika mentioned about uh, you know understanding the why being important because then people themselves will be able to relate to why are they doing this and what are they doing rather than just telling them do this um so so for the last few weeks we have been able to with the support of the uh, government medical uh, staff as well as the police um, and all the local government authorities get our operations back up and running most of our factories are around the 80-90% mass, uh, 80-90% uh, capacity. The reason that we are at 80-90% capacity is also because we have implemented social distancing within the plants, and as a result, the number of modules that we can lay out in a plant have reduced. But uh, over the last few weeks, what we have been doing is essentially trying to make this behavior into a habit, right? So um, uh, that is something we believe is very, very important, where people, without really thinking, 
they are conscious about social distancing they are conscious about sanitization they are conscious conscious about wearing a mask and they know the underlying reasons why so you know there is regular communication happening uh, educating people as to why we are doing this uh, what are the risks of not doing this uh, that education is happening at a team member level as well as at an executive level uh in terms of supporting the the country at an executive level we are still encouraging people to work from home uh we are going to great extents in terms of uh, helping people how to work from home so whether it is supporting their data package uh on you know so that they they can continue with video calls etc at home uh, uh teaching them how to balance home you know uh, work work life balance at home uh entertaining them with some you know exercise yoga breathing because those are things that you know sometimes uh, overwhelm people and they want to get out and go back to office so we put a lot of effort to try to keep people who don't necessarily need to be at a factory to be home uh but i agree with a lot of the comments that were mentioned from the previous panelists that uh, you know the, the, we are not at the end of the road uh we need to keep Uh, at least to make sure that we get out of it safe uh, and we need to es- essentially focus on the right things um uh, i also see that transport is a fairly uh, you know large variable that is you know something that we need to control and maybe govern for a period uh, so that people get used to and we co- we control we control that aspect of it because uh, in terms of us uh, from uh, getting employees to a workplace we are enforcing very strictly what they need to do uh, we are making sure that they are doing it we are having you know independent audits we are doing all of that so we are trying to create that behavior into habit at the workplace but then when they go out unless that external environment also has some structure and has some you know guidelines they may actually uh, forget that and then that's where i see that there is a risk happening um so from my point of view i think that's an area that we really need to focus to reduce risk ranil over to you so from our perspective ranil your voice is breaking up uh, i'm not sure whether it's the same for the others yeah uh, maybe if you can uh, switch off the video it might be better okay that's my view if you can speak louder so uh, so for so for us uh, when we looked at what was going on and, and the working environment that we were creating uh, it was easy to do certain uh, fixed work uh, where you can work from home however in the majority of cases where we have to make uh, decisions brainstorm uh, come together Uh, where human interaction starts becoming important uh, those are areas that we see uh, the weaknesses of working from home on a continuous basis so as a result it's going to be imperative that we have people coming together uh, on a periodic basis so what we are now doing in uh, officers is to uh, have certain days in which we are asking all the staff to come on others where they will stay uh, stay and work from home because in a lot of cases there are people who actually have seen positives of being able to work from home as well in terms of family uh, those relationships etc now in uh, when we start bringing people to work is where we have started seeing uh, the where the benefits are there where we need to say come together to brainstorm how do we be in a room where we can uh, speak freely uh, exchange ideas see people's faces things that are important how do we bring those together uh, so we have little inventions uh, or innovation uh, and ranker was right when he said that it's more innovation that needs to come out uh, as opposed to invention that needs to uh, come out because uh, we need to apply these Uh, the application of it is the most important and so simple things like our engineers came up with uh, little stoppers for doors that where you can open it with your foot and you don't need to use your hand and so that was really easy it was a, a 
three D uh, uh, prototyping software. You just sent it to any factory you wanted. Anyone could print it and put it on their door, uh, so that you can open the door with your with your foot. Uh, similarly, uh, other uh, you know ways of how do you have interaction uh, using perspex in a in a in a in a meeting environment so that people can still sit and talk and. And brainstorm and create value and, and things like that. So there are inventions that come out as a result. Other area that I have seen people coming together in Sri Lanka has been around the whole uh, PPE. Uh, how do we uh, become a player in this area? Uh, creating uh, different PPE solutions, etc. And I am seeing a lot of people coming together in that. So for me. Uh, as we come back to normal i think the risks that are going to be associated for me also personally i think transport is the biggest opportunity um, beyond that from officers etc we have to put things in place uh, that allow us to still be creative and add value which is one of the biggest things that we are going to have to do in the coming months thank you so Rani, yeah. uh, here also you are seeing a lot of opportunities yeah uh, pramod uh, pramita uh, yes, sir. Now, uh, well, uh, we were talking about PPE, personal protective equipment. So, uh, I'm asking this out of curiosity. Now, uh, there is a very high demand uh, for personal protective equipment, and uh, there are a lot of talk uh, going on exploring new market demands. So, um, are we really capable of uh, producing all these type of face mask and PPE inside Sri Lanka, especially medical masks? such as N95 and the uh, surgical masks. Yes. Uh, uh, so for, from our perspective, again, I'm hoping you can hear me better now. Uh, uh, from uh, our perspective, uh, we have actually made a whole collection of uh, PPE equipment. This came about as a result of the fact that the government was unable to secure the amount of PPE they wanted and it made us have to look at innovative ways of creating. So we, we managed to make for the government almost 30,000 uh, 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 PPE that was used in about 22 different hospital settings, including uh, uh, the, the gloves, the shoe covers, the, the PPE, uh, the full suits, things like that. And uh, that actually um, had to ma make us have to do that within the confines of this country uh, and what was available. So taking uh, woven materials, treating them, having surface treatments and, and creating that actually has created a massive opportunity. And we are now currently working with the Singapore government. Uh, uh, we are the only apparel manufacturer in that coalition with a lot of traditional, uh, you know, people like 3Ms, Kimberly Clarks, etc. Uh, where they are looking at going from disposable uh, PPE products to reusable PPE products. Uh, and the reusable PPE products require some more infrastructure that those people have to put in place like autoclaves, you know, the washing facility, handling, etc. However, in the long run, that is much more sustainable and the, obviously the volumes they need uh, are much lower. Uh, and so one of the issues that they're going to have in the future is that as you know, they're going to increase their readiness levels. That means they have to stock millions and millions of, uh, of PPE um, and keep it for that eventuality. So having reusable means that you need to stock, uh, you know, uh, 100,000 times less product. Uh, and, and so there's a benefit and a cost benefit to that. So therefore we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, excitement. Uh, to come to that kind of product. On the other side, where we are having an issue is the traditional PPE, the disposables, where they are using non-wovens, etc. That material is actually the bottleneck, not for us actually being able to make the product. That material right now is, the number one is China, number two is India, and uh, then uh, Turkey in terms of the manufacturing capacity. So, those countries are currently, China is restricting exports, so is uh, India and so is Turkey. So that, that's creating a bit of a problem for us in terms of getting that traditional non-woven material. Uh, 
as a public person uh, i would uh, appreciate because nowadays one of the major concern is about the uh, reusable because there's a need for reusable uh, masks uh, because many people they dispose the disposable mask in a haphazard way so in that case it's a harmful to the environment and also even if we burn it and it's again harmful to the environment so in that case uh, so moving to the reusable mask Uh, it's uh, greatly beneficial uh, in uh, many perspectives one is uh, uh, less damage to the environment and also cost wise and logistic wise uh, we appreciate your uh, um, uh, you know in, uh, entry into the reusable mask thank you yes well uh, thank you now uh, we have a resource person uh, who is representing the hotel industry now uh, Mr. Kanchan and Anna Akkar, Head of Human Resources from the Jetpin Hotels. Good afternoon, Mr. Anna Akkar. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. Well, uh, yeah. Well, uh, we heard that uh, these uh, tourist uh, tourist hotels are going to reopen in July, according to the Sri Lanka Tourism uh, Development Authority. And yes. uh, how is the hotel industry going to face these uh, upcoming challenges? uh i think a little correction i think uh, from next week onwards i think hotel will be open for sri lankan and then eventually in july it will be open for foreigners foreigners yeah the airport is open i mean you know so that's where we are at the moment but then again uh, our preparation for this one is is actually challenging one because if you look at the hospitality industry i mean for the last 30 40 years we've all promote i mean is all about customer engagement and then you know working closely with the guest and also with the local community there are a lot of people involved in this industry it's not only the guest and the employee uh, we have suppliers we have local community and then it is not an industry that happens in one place it happens everywhere so therefore we need to look at this holistically not only at the workplace we also need to look at the local community as well so with keeping all that in our mind and then also i mean you know since because of this high engagement nature of the industry uh, anyone contracting the virus or spreading the virus is also high so keeping all that in mind actually industry got together through tassel and then also with the sltda i think we have formulated guidelines to basically once the hotels are open what we will follow so guidelines are in place but then you know when these guidelines are in place as an industry what we are trying to do because you know everybody is i mean afraid of think that they don't know so what we are trying to do now is to awa- create awareness among everybody not only among our employees our suppliers the local community everyone and then also the case that we get so that is the first one that we are trying to do so almost the entire industry is now working on creating environment and awareness among everybody in the industry and then the second one will what is most important is once you have guidelines guidelines are in place that then you need to also make this guideline operational because if you look at the hotel industry there are a lot of uh, activities involved you need to make sure that the guests are comfortable and then you know you you have this housekeeping department who make sure the rooms are clean and then you have restaurant who serve food you have kitchen who cook food and you have reception who welcome guests so all those people are involved so what we are actually doing is operational i mean you know handing over these guidelines to operation teams and then with the operation teams we are now creating sub guidelines based on the properties because you also need to look at the properties that is the second one that we are trying to do and the third one is what is very important is the compliances because if we can have operation guidelines we can create awareness but if there are no compliances i mean now we don't think that you know we may be able to maintain the expected level so therefore among the industry what we are trying to do there will be you know compliance audit that will be done internally and externally and uh, to make sure whatever the guidelines laid out is practiced by everybody so that is the com- we we give lot of emphasis on compliances and then also we go in we the, the plan is i think slsi he has already introduced a certification for all the hotel whether we 
work according to these guidelines and then periodic and periodical audits like what we do it in ISO 22000 and other ISO certifications so these things have to be in place in order to make sure that whatever the guidelines that we have introduced is sustained and then this um, industry is not vulnerable so these are the activities actually what we have taken as an industry and even as a company thank you uh, well uh, dr kumarin when he is here as a community physician i think uh, you might have a question to ask yeah uh, uh, because uh, uh, you have uh, adopted a very good approach uh, because you wish to uh, make the awareness uh, and also the guidelines as well as the compliance uh, when with regard to when we compare to the april industry the challenges so you would be great because uh, you have a huge contacts because uh, you know your customer may vary from a wider range of people and also yeah. as you mentioned correctly mentioned you also need to have a good uh, awareness creation among the local people to you know uh, avoid some uh, so that uh, what sort of uh, activity you hope to you know make some awareness among the local people because that may be one of the important aspects yeah but we actually through our you know, most, I mean, you know in hospitality industry most of the companies have their own training team and then through training teams we are planning to go into community because as a company we work with the community a lot so we of course have access to the communities mainly through <coughs> programs and it will not be done alone we will also work with the phi the other government local authority and with all those people we will basically go into those community whom we think that we work with and then who can be vulnerable because of this so we have uh, once we identified those people through our training team along with the government uh, authorities and as well as with the local bodies we will conduct these programs island wide wherever our hotels are so that's the plan okay uh, thank you very much okay So now we have a very good round of discussion uh, by the most of the uh, almost all the uh, panelists. They have done their uh, presentations, and among the participants, uh, if they wish to raise any question, uh, you know you can uh, use the raise hand option, or oh, otherwise you can uh, type your questions in the uh, chat. Okay. Uh, there's a raise hand feature if you want to make use of from the participants or even you can just type in your questions from the panel. There were a lot of messages coming in actually, but most of the messages are very positive. They were appreciated in this discussion and the messages that were coming from the diverse range of resource persons that we were having. Uh, there's uh, Dr. Padma Bhutaratna is there. Yes, uh, Pamod, can you unmute Dr. Padma Bhutaratna? She has a question. Yes, uh, you can speak. Yeah, uh, can you hear me, Indika? Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah, no, now, um, as, uh, now we, because that we need to consider the non-COVID health issues as well within COVID, I mean, uh, as a measure of prevention of non-communicable diseases as well, it would be extremely important that we get our people to uh, do exercise, engage while maybe transporting and then promoting the cycling, walking, uh, at least to uh, the distances that they could manage to. So I think that uh, what about that we all together promoting that type of I mean, sort of uh, establishing that type of system for people and promoting even among professionals and the high people in higher ranks so that uh, uh, that is, that is uh, going to be acceptable to the community. Right. I think it's a, it's a brilliant kind of opinion because, again, uh, uh, this situation has taught us really little. I mean, how to live here. The healthy food, the lifestyle, the environment, imports of all these things. So probably the, the message coming in is that 
we have to take this as one window of opportunity and make the maximum use of the lesson that we have learned and then uh, probably improve from their own words. So, I mean, improving our lifestyle towards more healthy way, a very important message. I think that was what Dr. Padmanath uh, tried to highlight. Any, any more questions? Probably in the absence of uh, other questions, we can bring this very interesting, uh, very fruitful session to an end. And uh, a very good discussion was there from a range of highly qualified resource persons who are well qualified to come out with an opinion related to their fields. Shall we do one more round with the panelists for one final message? Uh, because what we are going to do is we are going to have video recorded this session and we are coming up with a summary of recommendations that could be submitted to different different stakeholders. So and also this whole session will be uploaded on YouTube and Facebook as well. So this is going to be a session that will be viewed by many other than the current participants and the, the responses and the recommendations would go to the digital maker. One, one final round of uh, messages from the participants who want to go first. Uh, we have from Kumar here and... Uh, yeah. can, yeah. I, can, I, can I make... Uh, I mean first yes, because yes. I have another meeting at 1.15. Yes, yes. 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 Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you very clearly. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, being the main law enforcement agency in the country, so we, I mean, don't have any idea to continue with quarantine coffee for a long period. But uh, still, the, the health authorities, they have not given green light in respect of, I mean, totally, uh, completely removing quarantine curfew from Colombo City, uh, or the Colombo and Gampaha districts. Uh, however, as you all know, other areas for a period of, in other areas for a period of 15 hours, uh, it is being lifted. So my uh, final request is, uh, especially the, I mean, almost all the countries adopted this theory. It is called SKWCS theory. So especially this theory was uh, introduced by the Israel uh, doctors. So we, we all know th about this theory. Uh, number one, uh, stay at home. This means stay at home. If you don't have anything, if you don't uh, go to your workplace, stay at home. Number two, K means uh, keep uh, social uh, distancing or whatever. Uh, I mean, this, uh, social or physical distancing, irrespective of that uh, particular word. So um, every time you need to keep one meter between two individuals, and number three, uh, wash your hands uh, constantly. Uh, number four, cover your mouth when you are sneezing or having a cough. And number five, uh, S means uh, symptoms. So if you are having symptoms or suspected symptoms, uh, kindly inform uh, the, the nearest health uh, officials or police. And don't hide anything. So that is the request uh, finally I can make. Thank you. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. I'll summarize it in a very simple way. Uh, thank you, DIG Ajit Rohana. I think the nation is very grateful for you and the law enforcement for the great service that they are doing. Thank yeah, you welcome. so much. Yeah, and uh, let's move to maybe Professor Amal Kumar again. Any suggestion? Way forward. Yes, um, just a few words from me. And I think listening to the panelists, uh, that's uh, always very encouraging, both to capture where we are and, uh, you know, what we face ahead. Uh, I think we have to keep our head in terms of being encouraged, but on the other side, not being too confident. Uh, I think um, as medical personnel, uh, you would be in a much better position to tell that we can't be too relaxed uh, particularly because of the, the, the severe and very quick setbacks that we can have as opposed to other decisions. So I, I, think, I think we are in that uh, you know, watershed position where uh, you know, we have to move forward, the economy has to move, people have to incur, interact, and we have to learn to live with uh, this new um, you know, uh, threat. 
Yes. So, yes. so I think the systems that we have traditionally used need to be tweaked a bit uh, to make this. So we talked about transport, we talk about the need for innovation, and I think uh, how to get people to work, working from home. So there are lots of things. So in the transport, I think we need to look at, last time I sp spoke about how to spread the demand, you know, when people work, what time you get them to work, when you open shop. So some of these measures that we have utilized in this last uh, couple of months, uh, we, need, we may need to keep them in place so that overcrowding doesn't happen. Uh, so that we balance the, the system capacity with the demand. Uh, these are actually, like you said, these are things that are good even to continue into the future. And this will be in fact an opportunity to ensure that we are sustainable in how we use our roads, in how we use the space on our roads, how we mix private and public transport, how we, I mean, many cities are now struggling uh, with non-communicable diseases and people not exercising enough, you know, and people being addicted to their motor vehicles. So I think these are times where I think we can push some of these better practices, more sustainable, healthier practices out. And I think we need a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, interdisciplinary uh, professional engagement uh, between uh, community, between industry, government, professionals, uh, and I think we have a, a challenging time to reshape a, a future, a, a world that can even be better than what it was. Thank you, Professor Kumarag. I think you have summarized everything in, in five minutes, I'm the way forward. Uh, Ranil or Salim, uh, any messages from the industry? Yeah. <clears throat> so I think from our perspective, uh, one of the things is, uh, I think there's a great opportunity. There, we had a culture historically in Sri Lanka where we wanted everything to come from abroad. Uh, as a result, uh, our engineers, inventors, uh, people, uh, our professors, all of them uh, historically didn't necessarily see a benefit of uh, being creative within this country. Uh, I think that has changed now. There's a pull. Uh, that is forcing us to come together. Now, we have to support this initiative both uh, from the government uh, as well as the private sector as well. So I think we should uh, promote, uh, say, either a made in Sri Lanka, invented in Sri Lanka, that kind of, uh, that kind of sort of push and a pull that will help people who invent to get their product into market and, and make it an innovation. And as that happens, you will find more and more impetus of us going up the, the value chain of everything that we create in the country. So therefore, I feel that there is an opportunity for us to, to use this to take our country from being producing you know, basic product to going up in the value chain, creating more value and using and harnessing all the, the great talent that we have uh, to create more value in everything we do. And uh, to, uh, from a transport sector, I think that's going to be the biggest under pressure in terms of people getting onto the road, et cetera, because that seems to be the bottleneck in this country. Uh, and uh, I think, again, the private sector has to also be a part of it around uh, whether it's changing the times that you work or allowing people to work from home or rescheduling you know, how they work uh, so that we all become a part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Ramon. For the interest of uh, uh, time, we'll move into the hospitality industry. Kanchana, one final message from you. Yeah, uh, actually, you know, as an industry, we've been, uh, we suffered 30 years of war, and then we had good time for about nine years. And then again, in 2019, we had the April attack. And then again, once we were coming back to normal, we faced this one. But then in, as an industry, we are very resilient. And then, of course, the final message for the everybody, I mean, because now that, I mean, we need to get back to business. The economy has to run. People need to, I mean, if you look at the tourism itself, it's not only the direct employment that are 
lot of indirect employment i mean they hardly have any income so this has to come back to normal again for people to live so therefore what we tell everyone in the industry follow guidelines stay safe and get back to business that's the message from the hospitality yes so we, we have to live in harmony and we have to get back um, yeah we have to get back yes rangika any message as the invention well, commission uh, well <laughs> not as in, i i think a lot of people have uh, already uh, stated uh, what i also have to say but i, I still feel uh, are we are we really doing the right thing uh, even after the covid uh, pandemic situation i mean i think i think we have to be natural we have to be natural we have to be we have to think of uh, uh, humanity and we have to think as a human and be independent i mean throughout the uh, the, the recent past we we were we were like slaves i mean we are we are depending on someone we are we are just believing blindly believing someone so i think we have to start uh, uh, being independent we were working 24/7 right i mean uh, throughout the, the recent past we were working 24/7 for someone maybe for the government maybe maybe for your institute maybe for your like indica you may be working for your university so we are working for someone but we never think of ourselves we 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 forget our thing and we we have to be think of ourselves and uh, we, we should start valuing ourselves i mean we are not valuing ourselves so we will not be able to value someone else so social values have has dropped because we can't simply we can't believe ourselves i think we we should restart uh, that particular initiation we have to start thinking ourselves again and we have to understand within this community we are not uh, the humans are not really uh, allowed to stay, stay in silos we are, a, we, are we, we we always allowed to stay, stay in a community so within in the community we have to understand there's something called social equal social responsibility so if we can uh, understand all these concepts if we can rethink of all these concepts i think we we can uh, we can be uh, natural again and uh, within that uh, natural uh, thinking and the independent thinking the free mentality i'm very sure there will be a lot of natural innovations come and that will definitely help the world to move forward thank you rangi and uh, with that we come to the end of this very important discussion very valuable ideas came up the need for community empowerment engagement and to learn from the lesson that was taught to us and make the maximum use of this window of opportunity and not to take this lightly the risk is still there so we have to be careful we have to live in harmony we have to live in harmony with everyone and we have to live in harmony with the environment so with that we come to the end of this session and i thank all of you all the resource persons your time is so precious and during this time period especially because we all know that you may be working 24/7 and every word that came from you is very important very much appreciated by everyone and i thank our organizers my co moderators pramit and kumarendra and dr sadhijit and dr pramod then everyone from slme and all of you participants with their active participation there are a lot of discussions going on in the chat and thank you and we will try to make use of this information the webinar will be uploaded in our social media and the youtube and we will be coming up this with the summary very soon as soon as possible dr sajit will be working on that and we will sharing that with all of you and try to make the maximum use of this wonderful opportunity thank you and have a great day